All right, thank you. Since the Russian invasion of Ukraine, about 300 companies have announced that they would withdraw from Russia in protests, but not all of them have left. Researchers at Yale University are tracking which companies have publicly announced a Russian boycott and if they followed through on it. Joining us now to talk about that work and why businesses leaving Russia is important is Professor Jeffrey Sonnefeld from the Yale School of Management. Thanks so much for joining us, Professor. Uh, thanks. It's an honor to be with you guys. All right, so I just pulled up this article. Uh, in a commentary that you did for Fortune, uh, you compared businesses leaving Russia right now to similar withdrawals from South Africa that happened before racial apartheid ended there. You said in the article, you know, there were some 200 companies that did this in addition to U.S. sanctions and that it was helpful. So how can you, uh, how do businesses leaving a country like Russia apply pressure to the government? Well, that's a, it's a great question. Uh, there are times where we have uh, tried economic sanctions and they work fitfully, sometimes better than others, but the, they work the best when they work hand in hand with the voluntary massive uh, uh, corporate uh, cooperation, which is what we see in these uh, uh, commercial blockades, these economic blockades by business leaders working in conjunction with the Le the legal governmental sanctions are very effective, and it brings an economy to a standstill. It's uh, it, it, the the uh, Bishop Tutu, Desmond Tutu, who, of course, was a great civil rights leader in fighting apartheid, uh, told me uh, personally in the early 90s, soon after apartheid dissolved, that what was so critical was that the, uh, the, the formal sanctions were met by a business stranglehold. Companies like Coca-Cola and IBM, 200 of them, that walked out then, it was a major move. Uh, and it, it strangled the, the, the world's, uh, at that time, uh, almost uh, uh, entire sole production of gold and silver, uh, diamonds uh, and rare earth minerals and things. So it mattered then. And, and in, in this case, we see 330 companies. It's really a gathering storm. The, the or snowballing might be a better, given I just heard your, your weather forecast, that the, the, the gathering momentum is enormous here of companies voluntarily doing this. No government pressure, no trade associations. They're doing this on their own, and, and it brings the economy to a standstill. That's how you got rid of a tyrant. Uh, you get rid of a tyrant either by warfare, by overthrowing their, their, their brutal, bloody side, or you go after the, their view that they control civil society the way, say, Gandhi did by bringing India to, to a, 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 paralysis, a paralysis or getting rid of Nikolai Ceausescu in uh, Romania or Eric uh, uh, Honecker in, in um, uh, East Germany. It was when civil society comes to a halt and it shows that the tyrant isn't so all-powerful after all. Professor, you know, we see some of these companies announcing that they're making the leaving, leaving Russia entirely, but we're hearing that some of these countries might be quietly, secretly uh, still having a presence in Russia. Talk to me about how important it is to make that known and to put consequences on those companies who, who say they're going to leave but don't leave 100 percent. Ben, it's incredible. I, I swear, uh, uh, and I shouldn't be swearing on air, that uh, during the break, I was just typing a nasty gram to a company that was sent me some mealy mouth message for, should, for us to reclassify them because they're, in fact, not doing what they purport to be doing, that they're still keeping everybody employed. They're saying, oh, we're just doing this critical business. And, you know, frankly, Danone, the Dan and Yogurt is an example of that. And we've classified them as one of the good guys, but I'm not so sure. They said, oh, we're going to put off all of our long term hopes and dreams and investment. We're just going to do a little dairy, dairy business, a daily dairy business. That's all Danon is, is a dairy business. Have they really seriously curtailed operations? I don't know, but there are a lot of companies like Whirlpool. You wonder what they're doing there. Uniqlo, uh, the, the the big retailer, is is defiantly there. They refuse to leave. Uh, there are companies like uh, in the drug supplier companies, uh, uh, Amerisource, Bergen, uh, nice people. That why are they staying there? Uh, Abbott Labs, and they're claiming the humanitarian reasons. It's uh, very misleading. Uh, so I think that's a critical issue is to put a spotlight on many that are staying. All right, Professor Jeffrey Sonnefeld from Yale School of Management. Fascinating work you are doing. Thanks for coming on and talking about it. Professor, Thank you very thanks. much.